Hey everyone, it's Rob here again, and we're gonna try something new today. So, I know we all have questions about what does unsearched wheat pennies means when you purchase from an eBay uh, seller. I decided to check out on uh, one of the online sales sites for unsearched wheat penny rolls, and what I was looking for is good reviews. I was taking a look at people that had at least four star reviews, and I also wanted to be fair to the seller. I didn't want to buy one roll or a couple of rolls. I wanted to be fair, and so I looked for lots of at least two or three or four or five rolls, and then I wanted to buy multiple lots at multiple times to see if that changed my luck, so to speak. So I went ahead and I purchased 12 penny rolls, and let's take a look at what unsearched wheat penny rolls really yields, at least from this seller. We'll let you be the judge along with me of whether these rolls were truly unsearched or not. Let's take a look at these rolls. So here the rolls are. Looks like they're from the Merchant's Bank. Now, I'm not too foolish to not believe that it's potentially been unrolled at one of the ends and then searched through and then conveniently placed back in the roll and folded back over. Now I'll tell you that this seller claims that they got uh, 30 of these rolls in an estate sale. So I bought, like I said, 12 rolls. It was four lots of three. So I'm very curious to see what's in these. We're hopeful that we'll get a good mix of teens and, and 20s and 30s in here. Not just a bunch of 40s and 50s, but I also know we'll probably get a bunch of 40s and 50s, mainly because they were minted in such volume compared to the teens and, and, and 20s and 30s. But I will get into the rolls and I will show you anything that needs to be shown. Wish me luck. Let's go ahead and get into this first one. See what kind of uh, noise we had. Let's go ahead and get started here. A 1950 plane. A 1926 plane, 1957 D, 1940, take a closer look at this one, that's a 1925 D, and a 1925 D has 22 and a half million minted, so that's it's not a bad coin whatsoever. It's in very poor condition, but still, it is a low mintage 20s Wheatie. A 1929 D, which is about 41.7 million, so that's three 20s, a 40 and two 50s in the first uh, few coins. Looks like a 1945 D. So far, pretty good mix. Looks like a 1939 plane, and it is. So that's our first coin from the 30s. 1951 D. 1954 S. And, you know, at least it's an S mint mark, and we've got a pretty good mix of mints so far. <sighs> Hold on. Well, this is a good coin, guys. I'm gonna bring you in for this one. We just got this coin right here. So we are 11th coin in. It's a 1909. It is not an S, but it's not just your regular 1909, it is a 1909 VDB. And you can see right here, the VDB. So the 11th coin into the very first roll, we scored a 1909 plain date VDB. Now mind you, only 28 million of these minted, 
that is the most of the VDV series. Obviously, the S had uh, 484,000. And overall, this is a pretty nice, this is a pretty nice 1909, honestly. It's not uh, perfect by any means. It's not an AU coin, but it's in really good shape. Good detail on the back. There's a few cuts in it, which is kind of a bummer. But overall, a great looking coin. I'm sorry I'm shaking here, I'm a little excited. But like I said, I'm 11 coins in. So if you think about 11 coins, we got five in the first 11 coins pulling a coin roll at random. Almost 50% of the coins are pre-1940. Let me go ahead and continue to go through this roll and uh, I'll give you a wrap up on the first roll and see how we do. There's a 45D for you. So out of the 50 coins, we had 21 from the 50s. So we had 13 from the 40s. We did have 10 coins or 20% from the uh, 30s. We had another six coins or 12% from the 20s. No teens, but a 1909 VDB as well. So in my opinion, on that first roll, that's a really good ratio. Really happy with that. We know we got our money back easily on the roll from the 1909 VDB. We still got 11 rolls. So let me keep stacking the coins and keep searching. If I come across something ridiculous, I'll show it to you. Otherwise, we'll keep putting uh, them up here and I'll give you a roundup after the second roll. Let's see what else we get. Thought I'd share this coin with you guys. It's a 37S. And it has that proof shine to it. So not quite sure if it's just a coin that hasn't been circulated very long or if it is possibly a proof. Let me know what you guys think. Is this a 37 proof? I'm not familiar with weedy proofs. I'll just tell you the lettering and the date is all stamped very deep. Anyway, we'll keep moving on. All right, so a roundup after the second roll. We are 100 coins in now, two rolls in. Got 41 from the 50s. We've got uh, 26 in the 40s. We've got 25 in the 30s. We've got, yeah, eight in the 20s. We got our first teens coin. It was a standard 1918 playing date. 290 million of these minted. Best coin in that roll, probably just because of age, is the 1918. Let's get to a third roll. Do you see it? Not so sure that's a weedy, guys. That's a uh, Canadian copper cent, 1953. Young head. Hmm, interesting. Let's see what else we get in this roll. Well, we just got our second 1909 plane. Went ahead and checked it before I showed you guys. It is not the VDB. So, you know, 72.7 million of these minted, but it's always nice to get a second 1909 though. I will take it. Kind of gypped on this one. 1959, it's not a mule scent. Got a little excited because it was like this when I first got in there and I thought, does that say 59 when I saw the spray painted one? And I was like, if this back is a, is a weedy, someone missed it. Well, they missed it all right. It's not a weedy if it's got a 59 on there and it's a memorial back. But, kind of a cool uh, little dynamic duo there. We'll be back in a little bit. So we're almost halfway through the roll and I'll give you guys a roundup here in a minute or halfway through the rolls, I should say. But I told you I'd bring you in when I found something kind of nice. We've got here, not the greatest condition overall, but a 1932D. And if you know anything about the 32 year during the Great Depression, they only minted a total of 19,500,000 coins and only 10.5 million of those were from the Denver Mint. So it's a tough year to get in any condition. And we've got our first 32D of the rolls. So good key date. Again, not the best condition, but we will take it every time. 
Let's see what else is in here. All right, we're exactly halfway through the 12 rolls, and I wanted to kind of catch you up real quick on where we're at. We've got 135 of the 50s. So that's roughly about 40, a little over 40% on the 50s. The 40s, we've got 61. So about a little over 20%. The 30s, we got 60. Well, not quite 60, we're 58. So not quite 20%. On the 30s, we've got 37. So roughly 13%. We've got five from the teens, two 1909s, one's a VDB, a 59 Lincoln Memorial, not a mule, and then a 53 Canadian Copper. So that's where we sit after a halfway mark. Let's dig in a little bit more and see what we get in the next uh, half. Down to the last three rolls, and in that fourth to the last roll, we got our third 1909 year penny, another not too bad a condition overall. You can see the detail and some of the gloss still. It is a, another VDB. I didn't even see it down there, but you can just make out the initials. So we've got our second 1909 VDB. And our third 1909 penny. And honestly, guys, this one's in a little better shape than the last one. So pretty pleased with it. I'll take a closer look under the loop. See if I see anything else with it. But uh, yeah, not doing too bad. So I'm on my last three rolls, like I said a minute ago. And I've been stacking them up. And look what popped up, guys. Look at this. Looks like an 1888 Pretty good condition Indian head. Detail on the back's not the greatest, but I've seen a lot more flatter surfaces. A little bit of staining there. Got some of the ridging around the edge, which looks good. It's a good looking coin. We're happy with an Indian head, always. Okay, so let's get to the roundup. We got that 1888 Indian head, which is a good score. We got three 1909 wheat pennies, two are the VDB, so that's that's a good score there. We got five teen Wheaties. All five were 1918, but there is a 1918D in there, so I guess that's kind of cool. We ended up with uh, 60 of the coins from the 20s. A lot of mixed dates in there. We got 140 coins from the 30s. The key here is I got two 1932Ds, and those are low mintage. 10 and a half million uh, minted coins. So that's good score on those. We ended with 148 from the 40s. A lot of good mix there. And 238 from the 50s. So roughly 64 and a half percent were from the 40s and 50s. And if you toss in the two throwaways, really about 65% of the coins were 40s and 50s, which is what to be expected. Not a lot of key dates. Again, a couple of good scores. At the end of the day, I'd rate this as a pretty good a uh, lot overall. I would say because of the lack of the teens and a lack of the key dates in the 20s that these probably were not totally unsearched. The, it looked like each lot had a couple of good coins in it just to keep uh, people coming back and buying. I'm not unhappy with my purchase. I probably would buy from this seller again. Now I have the fun task of cataloging the coins by mint and by year, and then placing them into the jars for a later scrutiny. As always, if you enjoyed this search with me, please give the video a thumbs up, and thanks for watching.